answers. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Well, Lord, buddy, time now for Truth, Justice, and the NBA for your Sunday, May the 17th of 2015. As um, I'm getting ready to uh, watch Game 7 between the uh, Clippers and the Rockets in the West Semis. But this show is going to be about the East. It's been a while since we've talked about the Eastern Conference. And, of course, the Cleveland Cavaliers and Atlanta Hawks will get it on Game 1 of the East Finals on Wednesday. First time for Atlanta, by the way, that they've been to the Conference Finals since 1970. Let's talk about Cleveland first, and you know the big difference between Cleveland during this tenure of LeBron James, and of course um, the last tenure which they had him. And by the way, the last year that uh, LeBron was there, that was the last time that uh, LeBron did not play in the NBA Finals. Okay, he's been to the NBA Finals each of the last four times, and of course has won uh, two championships. Big reason why he came back to his home state of Ohio, we all know why. To try to do this time what he couldn't do the first time, and that is win a championship for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Biggest difference between now and then for Cleveland, the fact that now, even when LeBron isn't always on his game, which is rare, he has teammates that can pick up the slack in big games. We saw that in game number six, the game clinching game for the Cavs. It was a, a game in which we thought was going to be the highest scoring of the bunch after one quarter. After all, Cleveland led 32-31 after one. And then the Bulls managed to score 42 points the rest of the game. I mean, I have seen junior high games that had more point production from a team in three quarters than what Chicago put up. Shooting under 40% for the game to the Bulls and shooting 20% from three-point range. And in their defense, in a way, you know, Pal Gasol, his first game back in, in three games because of the hamstring issue, you know, he was limited. He barely played over 20 minutes. He was largely ineffective um, that night in Chicago. And, you know, Jimmy Butler, I thought he had one terrific series, and we'll get into more about him and his future with Chicago in just a little bit. But I thought he did everything he could, 20 points in the game. He, he contributed. You know, for Derrick Rose, it wasn't one of his best nights, only, only 14 points. And even though Derrick Rose in these playoffs, we saw how good he could be. We also saw, too, that, you know, getting in game shape, uh, takes a while, and maybe he wasn't all the way in game shape, and maybe Cleveland had a lot to do with how his play was dictated. The whole point was LeBron, as great as he was in Game 4, especially in Game 5 of the series, Game 6, for, by his standards, had an off night. Only 15 points in the game. Didn't really have a triple-double, though, with 9 rebounds and 11 assists, and Kyrie Irving, um, you know, tweaking his left knee early in the second quarter, did, did not return to the game. For the Bulls, the opportunity was right there. I mean, I mean, you got Cleveland's, um, you know, big three, um, one that's not playing very well in the game in LeBron, another one in uh, Irving who gets hurt after Irving plays barely over 12 minutes in the game, doesn't come back, and, of course, Kevin Love's out for the rest of the season. The big three, you know, not quite the same, and, and the Bulls still could not get the job done. Could not get the job done. Matter of fact, uh, their shooting was spot out dismal. They were looking for somebody to get them going, and Cleveland had two major runs in the game, one in the second quarter, which established a 14-point Cleveland lead at halftime, and then it got worse for the Bulls, missing 10 of their first 11 field goals to start the third quarter, and this puppy was over just like that. So before we uh, talk about Chicago's future, we've got to talk about you know Cleveland's present. You know What led to the win then? if, if uh, Irving and, um, and LeBron couldn't be a factor? Well, how about the play of the bench? Cleveland's bench outscoring Chicago's 40-20. to 20. There you go in a nutshell. And Matthew Dellavedova, the backup point guard, was spectacular. 19 points, shooting 7 of 11, including three three-pointers. And, you know, other players contributed as well that you would consider supporting cast members. But veterans, too. Uh, guys like J.R. Smith with 12, as well as um, Iman Shepard with 13. What a pickup he's been. And Tristan Thompson, his play has elevated to with 13 points. So the supporting cast members did a fantastic job. And now Cleveland, you know, since they wrapped up their series before Atlanta, getting a little bit more rest as games one and two of the East Finals will be from Atlanta. And speaking of the Hawks, you know, this was a battle for them. And we'll always wonder 
what might have been, what the series would have been like, or if the Wizards would have won the series if John Wall had been completely effective. Of course, the um, of course he had um, a, 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 a wrist hand injury um, fracture. So there's no question that although he played, you know, he played in discomfort. And although he had his moments, it wasn't the same John Wall. That put more and more of a burden on Bradley Beal, whom in games five and six, you know, he was the leading scorer for the Wizards. You know, he did one heck of a job considering the load that uh, Washington had ahead of them. Game number five on the road in Atlanta, Beal had 23 points and seven boards after um, Wall had a mere 15 on the night. But Paul Pierce, you know, it wasn't one of his best nights that he's had. It, it re really, really wasn't. But he delivered a three-point shot from the corner in the final seconds. Well, that's a shock, right? That Pierce, you know, he says he saves his best for last. And, and certainly he has so far in, in these playoffs, not a surprise at all. And he thought, okay, all the Wizards have to do is hold Atlanta off for a few more seconds, and they'll have the game won. Well, they gave Atlanta two shots in the final seconds after the first one was no good. The man of the hour, Al Horford, delivered 23 points, 11 boards, including the winning putback with just over a second to go. And this time, Paul Pierce did not hurt the Hawks. It was the other way around as the Hawks got the better of the Wizards by one point that night, 82-81, setting up game six and a chance for the uh, Hawks to clinch. And they would not waste it. Even though Kyle Korver had a bad shooting night for the Hawks in game six, he only, he only hit one field goal, didn't hit any threes, only had two points and three turnovers. Just a raunchy performance for a player that's much better than that. The front court, though, was just the opposite. They were amazing. A combined 45 points for a guy who's had a wonderful playoff so far. The emergence of Demari Carroll is being witnessed in front of all of us, and he continues to play at such a high level. And then Paul Millsap, he's battled injuries, you know, all season long with the shoulder. But you know what? He was not going to let it affect him. 20 points and 13 boards for um, for Millsap. Big time for him. And unfortunately for the Wizards, you know, Marcin Gortat, who was a big reason why the Wizards almost won Game 5 with his 14 points in Game 5. Game 6 kind of got the James Harden bug. In other words, he had flu-like symptoms, stomach problems. He did get an IV that morning, but he was very limited in play, was uh, Gortat. Um, he was largely ineffective, as a matter of fact. Um, um, he only played 12 minutes a game and had two points, so that's a real shame. Again, Bradley Beal for the Wizards. In the game, you know, boy, this was one of his best games. 29 points for the star from the University of Florida. Hit three threes and was nearly 50% from the field. And, um, you know, Nene in the game had 11 rebounds. So, so rebounding-wise, he did his part. But, again, Paul Pierce was missing a lot of shots. Only one of seven in game number six. And with the uh, Hawks trailing in the game late with under four minutes to go, I thought really what helped them close the thing out was the tandem of uh, Jeff Teague assisting to Carroll twice in the final minute, both buckets, and with the uh, Wizards trailing by three, you had a feeling they'd be going to Paul Pierce, and Pierce briefly appeared to have tied the game with what looked like a near impossible three from a corner as he's fading away. I don't know how he hit it, and Atlanta really doesn't know how he hit it, and it looked like we were heading to overtime. Plays like that, though, when it's that close to 0, 0, 0 on the clock have to be reviewed, and it was determined, and it was a good call when you see it on the replay, that Pierce still had the ball in his hands, in his possession, when the clock read all zeros. By one-tenth of a second, Pierce could not beat the clock, and time expired, and so did the Wizards' season. So, Atlanta and Cleveland, as Atlanta will meet Cleveland on Wednesday, thanks to a hard-fought win, 94-91. to Now, talking about free agents as we get ready to wrap up the show for the teams who were eliminated in round number two, Chicago and Washington, uh, Jimmy Butler um, is a restricted free agent. That means another team can offer, and if the Bulls can't meet the offer, then Butler will go to that team. Remember, Butler, the year before, he passed on a, a contract extension, and what a move that was because Butler, talking about a guy who is the most improved player in the NBA, by the way, now his stock really, really goes up. He's going to get a big payday. Probably will sign a one-year deal with the Bulls, um, if, if that's possible, to get ready for those big TV contracts coming up the year after for the 2016-2017 season. you got to think that the Bulls will do everything in their power 
to keep him. That's probably not going to be good news for Mike Dunleavy, despite playing well um, down the stretch. He's an unrestricted free agent, made just $3 million this past year. And Kirk Heinrich, by the way, has a player option of just over $2 million. Heinrich, you know, might stick it out because, you know, because of his injuries, the his value has depreciated uh, quite notably for uh, the Bulls. Didn't play that much at all in these last two playoff series. And Aaron Brooks, uh, a point guard, uh, he's an unrestricted free agent. He didn't even make a million this last year, so he could be a salary cap casualty as well for the Bulls. And for the Washington Wizards, Paul Pierce, he's going to either play next year or he's going to retire. It's that simple. He'll be a Wizard next year. Or he's going to say bye-bye. The guy, I remember, is, uh, I believe, 37 years old. So he has to decide if he's going to take the wear and tear of another season. And Drew Gooden, he made uh, a little over $8 million this past year, unrestricted free agent. I cannot imagine the Wizards um, re-signing him. Now, now, Kevin Serapin, a little over uh, $3.5 million per year uh, is what he made this past season, unrestricted free agent. That's very debatable as far as what's going to happen with, uh, with him. And Rashul Butler and Will Bynum, um, both free agents as well, Bynum, uh, garnering $3 million this past year, one point four for Butler. So, decision-making right there. I think the Wizards are going to be making some, some, some changes. Again, they get to the uh, conference semis for the second straight year, but maybe they need that one additional player, maybe that something missing to get over the hump. Again, they come close. They lost in six last year to the Bulls, losing six this time to top-seeded Atlanta. So we'll talk a little bit more about Atlanta and Cleveland later on. And then my next show, we are going to uh, wrap up our discussion of the Golden State Warriors and, and how they eliminated Memphis in Game 6. And, of course, recap uh, the game that's about to happen right now between the Rockets and the Clippers from Houston, Game number 7. Thanks for joining us for Truth, Justice, and the NBA. Bye, everyone.